Welcome folks. What are we doing today? Two things, both by request from some of our viewers from our last video where the engine cranks and will not run. Remember that one? Engine cranks, I'm not bashful, no, 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 no. They asked for more information about testing the ignition and they asked for more information about using the starting fluid. Let's get busy right over here. We're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need a spark plug. It doesn't have to be a new one. An old spark plug will probably be okay, but we'll have to test it. We're going to need a piece of baling wire. Okay. We're going to need a couple of tools. We'll need some diagonal cutters, a pair of pliers, and a file. What we're going to do is we're going to make a secondary ignition voltage analyzer. I like to jazz up the name because we get to charge more for that. We're going to make a spark tester. Here's how you do it. You get yourself a spark plug. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to bend the negative electrode away from the positive electrode. I'm trying to hold it so you can see it. You can see that the negative electrode has been bent away from the center electrode, positive electrode. You go ahead and you use the diagonal cutters to snip off as much as possible. Now we want to get that little nub out of there so we can increase the level of performance of this spark tester. What we do is we take a file and the, probably the best way is to lay it down and then we're going to do this a little bit. We're trying to remove as much of that little negative electrode as possible. Now that's probably enough for the demonstration. Going to be just fine. Now you can buy one of these, 10, 12, 15, 20 dollars, but why buy one when it's so much more satisfying to make your own tools? We're almost done here. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this baling wire and you're going to position it right here on the metal part in that groove and then you begin to give it a twist. Now this is where we need a pair of pliers now because we want this nice and tight. We're going to twist this baling wire just right so we can get a nice firm connection on there. Now purdy, I like purdy, so we're going to trim this up and we're almost done with this part. This is going to be our spark tester. All we have done is remove as much of the side electrode as possible. We've attached this little pigtail and the next thing we need is that homemade jumper wire. If you didn't see that particular one, yes, I'll leave a link in the description. It's the one that we dance with the test light, but using one of these is almost always necessary. Here, you see it? Now we have a spark tester, but we like to jazz up the name. This is going to be our secondary ignition voltage analyzer. Of course, we're going to the hood so I can show you how to use this simple tool. The first thing was to make and use that spark tester. We've made it, but the second major thing we're going to do is explain more details about using this for testing not only the fuel system, but also testing the ignition system. Most of you can figure out, well, he's going to spray this in a certain place. But I want you to understand how wonderful this little guy is. This is an entire electronic fuel injection system in a can. This is the fuel tank. This is the fuel pump. This is the fuel delivery system. This is the sensors. The sensors are right here. I'm going to give you an idea when we get to the hood what I'm going to do. Not only am I going to use it to test the fuel system, I'm going to make the engine run almost normal by pulsating the amount of spray that I, that I use. I'm going to spray and release, spray and release, spray and release. Now the electronic processor, the computer, the PCM is up here. The fuel part is in here and the sensors are right here. It's time to go to my favorite place. Come on, let's put both of these tools to use. 
Engine cranks but will not start. Okay, partner, crank it over. Okay, hold it. Try it again. Crank it. All right. I want to make sure you know the details about using the starter fluid correctly. What you do is you locate your air cleaner box. Everything's friendly on this vehicle. I wonder why. I'm going to go ahead and start to expose the air cleaner. Okay, I unsnap it and I start to lift it off. Now in this particular case, this is so easy to get to, I'm going to go ahead and expose the induction hose. So I'll loosen this clamp up. All right, you just pay attention what you're doing and everything will go back just right. We're going to use the starting fluid to check to see if the fuel pump is the problem. I take that off. I don't have to really unplug anything. I just make enough room. This is a very good example of how easy it can be. Now, it's so nice when you have somebody to help you because there is a particular procedure for this. First, I'm going to ask my partner, turn the key on and hold the throttle wide open on all these new. You got the key on and the throttle. Okay, he's not cranking it yet. On almost anything in the 2000 sub, it has what is called throttle by wire and we want to introduce a nice amount into the intake manifold. Key on, engine off, throttle wide open. I'm not going to be bashful, but I'm going to give it a big shot. Okay, close the throttle and try and start the engine. Did you see that? Let's do it one more time. The engine ran almost normal. We'll do it one more time to make sure you got it. With the key in the on position, not cranking, your partner holds the throttle down all the way. That way the throttle will open and the starting fluid will be allowed to get very close to the intake manifold. I am not bashful. I give it almost a two second shot. Release the throttle and crank. That tells me if the engine cranks and does not start, that there's something wrong with the fuel system. Now, I'm not going to condemn the fuel pump yet, but more than likely it is the fuel pump. If your vehicle has about a hundred plus thousand miles, and if it suddenly doesn't run, and you do this and it runs, it's definitely related to the fuel system. So, let me show you this fuel injection system in a can. Go ahead, I need a throttle wide open. Okay, throttle open. I'm going to do the same thing. Close the throttle. But this time, I'm going to pulsate this. And I'm going to time it just right to where the engine will idle. Start the engine. The engine is running off of this cab. No pump, no sensors, no injectors, no fuel tank. It is running off of this can. I guess if you had to, you could continue to do that. All right, that should give you an excellent idea on how to use this for testing the fuel system. Now it's time to go to our next major subject and that's going to be testing the ignition system. You would want to test the ignition system if it makes no attempt to start. If you spray it and it makes no attempt to start, now what? We get our homemade spark tester out. It's time to do the next part. If you spray the right place and no attempt to start, it's time to bust out our homemade spark tester. Let me just get it out of the way. Now, unfortunately, this is where the, all the variation is going to occur to get to the ignition coil. Now, this does represent most late model. The latest thing out is, is called COP, coil over plug. 
Pick the easiest one. We're doing this to test the ignition system. You, it's not too difficult to do this, so just kind of be careful. Pay attention what you're doing. Don't drop any of the bolts because you're going to need it. I've removed the bolt right there, holding the ignition coil in place. We always put it in a safe place. Now let's see if this coil will come out fairly easy. Here we go. Again, when you're doing this, pick the easiest one. This is a cop. Coil over plug or coil on plug. You leave these little wires plugged in. Do not unplug them at any time. You don't need that. You take your homemade spark tester. You put the homemade spark tester in the coil. You take your homemade jumper wire and you attach it to that little pigtail and then you will ground the other one. Ground means to attach it to some metal part of the engine. Do not, do not ground it on the battery. We don't want any chance of sparks around the battery because we're always safe. We don't want to explode the battery. I'm pretty sure this little section right here should be good. We're taking our homemade spark tester. Remember, jazz up the name, we get to charge more for that. Secondary ignition voltage analyzer. Our homemade jumper wire. We're going to crank it and we're going to look right there. Don't worry, you're not going to get shocked. Let's see if I can hold the, the spark tester so you can see the spark. Partner, can you crank it over, please? All right, that's good. Did you see it? Did you see the spark? Spark, 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 spark. That's what we want. That tells me that the ignition system is working. If you did not get any spark, if you did not get any spark, check one more coil to make sure that it's working. Let's check it one more time, maybe give you a slightly different angle. There it is right there. Partner, can you crank it over? Okay, that's good. Did you see that? We just tested two of the three ingredients needed. I will leave a link in the description on the last video explaining the three ingredients needed to make the engine run. Our can of starting fluid took care of one of the ingredients. I showed you all the details and how I showed you how to use the spark tester. Let's finish up. Thank you for the view. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it. If you learn something and want to keep updated, hit that notice bell, please. And if you really like this video, we would appreciate it so much if you can share with family and friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. We appreciate it so much. Thank you.